Hi, happy Tuesday. It's time for Jibba Tuesdays again. So, yes, open enrollment is over, and I've been talking about a lot of different things since open enrollment is over. So hopefully, I have saved you money on your health insurance premiums during open enrollment, and I encourage all people to save whatever savings they have. Um, have a medical savings account or uh, just even a savings account on the side that they put some cash in that they have for medical expenses when the needs arise. Because if you can be a cash pay patient, sometimes that's um, cheaper than using your insurance. But that's for another day. So what I want to talk about this week is life insurance. So a lot of people do not have the right amount of life insurance or any life insurance at all. So why is that important? Well, life insurance is meant for the people that are still here after you're gone. If something were to happen to you, uh, how would your family take care of final expenses? Do you have small children? Do you want them to have a college fund? Do you want your spouse to have the house paid for? These are all really good questions that I can help with to determine how much you need and what kind of life insurance you need. And so people go, life, isn't life insurance, do you get paid when you die? Well, you don't get paid, your beneficiary does, but it does pay out when you die. But there are different products and different tools and different ways to use life insurance. So, for example, there's term life insurance. Term life insurance is a policy that the rate is set for a certain amount of time or term. And that rate is locked in for that length of time. It's the cheapest insurance you can get. Um, get up to a 30-year term and your rate won't change for 30 years, but in the 31st year, your rate will increase based on your current age. And that can be a huge jump. Um, I recently had a policy that I had for 20 years and it went from $90 a month to about uh, $1,100 a month. So I had to do something different uh, on that term policy. So I wasn't going to pay $1,100 a month. So term can be used for a lot of people will get a term policy until their house is paid for. So you get the value of the home on the policy so that if one of you pass away, then uh, the house can be paid for. So that's one way to use term insurance. Or to make sure you have something for final expense. A lot of final expenses, you'll see those commercials please talk to me first <laughs> uh, about final expense insurance. And a lot of people can qualify even with health conditions for small amounts. Um, so we would just need to check to see uh, what you would be eligible for. And that's one way to, if you've not done life insurance, but want some final expense insurance, we could certainly do that. And it's a special term policy that we use for that. Another tool is universal life. Well, wait a minute, I skipped over whole life. Yes, whole life is a product that gains cash value. Term does not, but whole, whole life insurance does. But the rate of return on it isn't always that great. We use whole life a lot in kids because they cannot have a universal life policy till they're 18. But we can do um, whole life on the kids and then just convert it later on. So universal life. Why is universal life great? Well, universal life can be used not only for a life insurance policy, but can also be used as a means of a retirement income. Like, what do you mean? So obviously, depending on the situation, and this is a much longer conversation than this for this blog, but, but the basic nuts and bolts is you get a policy, the face value of what you want it to be, and based on the amount you put into it, which you can put in excess amounts over the actual cost of the insurance, that amount is reinvested. Uh, most of these policies have a floor, which means you can't lose money. So it's a great investment tool, unlike a 401k or an IRA where you could lose all your money. This does have a floor where you won't lose X amount, whatever that floor is set at, and it can be different. And you can, all the money you put in there when you turn depending on your age or when you want to start drawing it out, but let's just say 65, if you want to start making withdrawals at 65, any of the money you put in there on top of the insurance is non-taxable or little tax. 
let's say that it's after tax dollars you're putting in there. So yes, you could have to pay taxes on your gains, but if you're retired, your tax bracket is going to be lower than it would be now. So that is one way that you wouldn't have to pay money or lower your tax liability later on. Again, this is a much longer conversation. Uh, I get, I talk to you, get your basic information, figure out which plans or combinations. Sometimes it makes sense to do combination, get term for a certain amount and do universal life for another amount. And because you've got some debt you want paid off or you want your house paid off or you want your kids to go to college. And then once all that's said and done, then maybe you don't need the term anymore. So hop on over to my page, JCAP Consulting. Uh, schedule a time to chat with me about your life insurance needs. I'm hoping that um, my goal is to have everyone have some kind of life insurance so that when that time does come, your family is not stressed about having to take care of all that stuff. And you know that they will be taken care of because you've left them some money to take care of things. So until next week, peace out.